Hello, my name is George and I am a postdoctoral researcher at Durham University and the Aristotle University of Thessaloniki. We are aware that emotions can be expressed through music and partially understood across cultures. We are aware that basic emotional connotations in music can potentially be recognized across cultures or at least up to a specific point. This is largely due to the fact that cross-cultural similarities exist for features shared between vocal and musical expressions. We are also aware that the recognition of musical effect expressions in performance is possible even across cultures. However, we are also aware that the recognition of non-basic emotions is difficult in music. That is because largely non-basic emotions are not readily defined in the same manner across cultures. At the same time, we are aware that the effect of culture on perception of music itself is not uniformly shaped. There is the ongoing dispute of consonants and dissonance right now, as we are aware. And at the same time, we are also aware that musical structural knowledge can be implicitly acquired through mere exposure to a particular type of music. This has been already well known in ethnomusicology circles as the Western impact on world culture, which is overarching. And thankfully, it has been started to be picked up in this science as well. Our aim here with this experiment was to explore how participants unfamiliar with Western music will assess emotional connotations of Western and non-Western harmonic styles with a particular interest in mode. Our hypothesis was that the major minor distinction in its association with specific emotions is a Western cultural convention and that it will have limited utility in communicating emotions in a cross-cultural setting if no additional cues are offered. Our second hypothesis was that a roughness could be a significant predictor of emotions in all stimuli, as it appears to be present cross-culturally. Let's talk about our methods and our stimuli now. Our stimuli were voice recordings taken from two databases, real music samples, and also reharmonized melodies using a computer software in eight different styles. So the idea was to use a single melody which would be reharmonized in different genres. So over here you see one melody which has been harmonized in a Bach chorale style. And now you can hear the same melody, which has been reharmonized in a whole tone style. The instructions that we were giving our participants were the following. Listen to each sample and assess which emotions you think the music is expressing on the following scale. So basically, we were calling our participants to rate perceived, not felt emotions. The scales that we used for ratings were one scale, liquor scale, for basic emotions, and a separate scale for rating of dimensions, such as valence, energy, and dominance. We run a pilot online using the Qualtrics platform, as you see below, so the participants would click play on the sample, and then they would proceed to rate it on the scales below. However, the second pylon that we run was basically a preparation for our field work. We are aware that cultural diversity calls for a suitable methodology which enables all participants to provide responses. This is impossible without insiders to the locations that we intended to do our research. So the second pilot study included Western and non-Western participants. This was done to confirm that all of our participants, regardless of background, have similar and suitable expressions of emotions to each other, and also share the belief that music can convey emotions. Second, we also had to overcome the linguistic barrier. 
That is, we had to make sure that the study was accessible even to non-literate participants. For this reason, we decided to use images in order for our participants to rate the emotions on Likert scales. So, for the basic emotions, we had our participants to select based on facial expressions of emotion, and for dimensions, we had our participants do the ratings on the Bradley and Lang scale. Here is the modified Bradley and Lang scale, which was used in order to rate valence, arousal, and dominance. And over here, you see the approach that we adopted in order for our participants to rate the basic emotions. So we used a database that had encoders coming from different cultural backgrounds. The first step was for our participants to select which encoder matched their cultural background. Then they would proceed to identify basic emotions from the encoder that they selected. And then they would be presented with a gradient of emotions from the encoder that they selected. So, how was this applied in the field? First, our participants would have to place the Bradley and Lang images in order of magnitude. Then they would select an encoder from the previous database that you have seen with the facial expressions of emotion. Then they would have to identify the basic emotions from their selected encoder. And then they would be exposed to the sonic stimuli. First, they would have to recognize emotions from the voice recordings. We used two databases, one in Urdu and the second one in German. Then they would have to rate the real music samples from a database and also music samples from the participants' own cultures. If our participants proceeded to rate successfully the first and second trials, that is, the voice recordings and the real music stimuli, only then we would play for them the different harmonization of the melodies and ask them to rate them. Our participants came from two regions of the world. First, from the United Kingdom, from the areas of Durham and Newcastle, and second, from the borders between Afghanistan and Pakistan. We worked with two tribes, the Kalash and the Kho tribes. These tribes were selected because of their remoteness and a relative non-access to Western civilization. Here are some pretty pictures of our fieldwork. And this is us in the field collecting data with the analog methodology I presented to you before. Very quickly, I'll go through our results. So for the voice recordings, we saw that our participants universally had the capability of recognizing emotions, whether they were from the Urdu or the German database. So they gave us uniform responses, both in terms of dimensions and also in terms of basic emotions. When it came to the real music stimuli, we saw that both similarities and differences started to come about. Let me draw your attention to the high valence ratings for the Moroccan samples or uh, the co music samples or the Kala samples, but also the high energy levels for heavy metal music, which was also found to be very, very dominant at the same time. Also, look at the ratings for the basic emotions. Again, we see similarities and differences, as, for example, all our participants uh, thought that the film music samples from our database expressed sadness, where at the same time, for heavy metal music, it was rated relatively high for under, but then again, you see the difference between Western participants, the blue box, and also our non-Western participants, the triangle and the circle. Now, let's have a look at how our participants rated the different harmonizations. Clearly and instantly, we see that the whole tone harmonization was at a different level in comparison to all the rest of the harmonizations. That being said, I have to point out that a mode, apparently, was playing a significant role for our Western, our Western participants, but not for our non-Western participants. As we're pressed for time, let me just jump to the conclusions and we are aware that the harmonic ratings across the affective dimensions showed significant cross-cultural differences. Although Western participants presented a major minor distinction conventionality associated respectively with joy and sadness, these connotations were not present in Northwest Pakistan. 
harmonic style appeared to influence the emotional expression in music by tapping into the appropriate cultural connotations and due to the fact that the harmonizations themselves varied in roughness. Nonetheless, we have seen that harmonization styles with high levels of dissonance, and we used the Wang and colleagues model here, but with similar levels of loudness, timbre, tempo, and harmonic rhythm, are perceived to be high in energy, dominance, and, art, and anger, regardless if participants have never been exposed to that particular style of harmonizations. We are also aware that responses to these different stimuli may vary also within and not only between groups. As a living point, I'd like to draw your attention that emotion evaluations for specific music stimuli may cons be considered to transcend cultural barriers. But mode, as in major or minor mode, does not appear to be uniformly recognized across all cultures in the world. I'd like to thank you for your attention and I would like to give special thanks to the Kalash and Co tribes, the government of Pakistan, the Marie Curie Foundation for providing funding for this project, and Durham University for its support. I would also like to draw your attention to the two articles that have been published on this research in PLOS One and the Annals of the New York Academy of Science. Thank you very much.